Finding great learning resources is very difficult in an industry where many people think they know just enough so they can make money teaching other people the very basics of game development. But there's still hope! <laughs> in this scenario, in this industry, I found this book by Borja Lopes Montilla. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. His social media is Dante Signal 31. So if you want to get in touch with him. As you can see, this book is about a tool that I personally hate. But after reading it and getting in touch with Borja, I have nothing to say, guys. This is a masterpiece, a one-of-a-kind learning resource. So by the end of this video, you're going to understand the value of consuming learning resources from tools that you don't use, especially if you actually hate them. So let's get started. You know, there are several learning resources, books and courses alike, explaining the basics of programming and how you can implement a basic set of features in a practical project. But usually these projects are very small. It's understandable because they have to fit the size of the book or the course, but they don't take into account the amount of effort and processes involved in making a commercial game. And here's the first point where this book shines because Borja takes into account that throughout this book, we are going to reconstruct a legendary game. The legendary game in this case is Prince of Persia. So on top of showing the techniques behind Unity and how you can implement some features in Unity, Borja also shows the historical context of this legendary game. On the very first chapters, we learn how we can make rotoscopy, how we can actually use all the resources that we have available, no matter what we have available. Borja decided to go the other way around in his book. Instead of showing the very basics about making a game, thinking that his audience would be unlikely to make an actual huge commercial game, Borja decided to unravel every aspect of making and maintaining a legendary game, using Prince of Persia as a study case. Borja starts the book by presenting Prince of Persia historical context and how the developers work around the technical limitations to achieve their vision, using, for instance, motion capture techniques like rotoscopy to create the main character's animations. And here's where I had the first insight with this book. On the very first chapters, we should make games instead of excuses. The guys behind Prince of Persia, they had many technical limitations, but they wanted to create the game. So they worked their asses around the problems and find a way Way to create the game they had in mind. They had a vision that they wanted to bring into reality. So how many times had we been making excuses instead of creating the games we wanted? Then Borja introduces the book's project, Prince of Unity, which is not only going to reproduce the study case, Prince of Persia, but will also add new features on top of it with a modern approach to the game. He even introduces the idea of smart goal setting to present the scope of the project, followed by a list of 22 items explaining all the features that we are going to to add to this custom game to make it even more interesting. After presenting all the tools that we are going to use throughout the project and explaining their value, for instance, using OBS to capture some footage from Prince of Persia so we can analyze them and reproduce their features, Borja onboards the reader to the unit editor, explaining how we can create games with Unity and explain the whole process of Unity game development. He is for sure a specialist in Unity, but I want to highlight how good Borja is with teaching. He has a very meticulous approach to explaining all the terms and all the concepts that he's going to use, then just after explaining and introducing all the concepts, he actually dives into action. For instance, when explaining finite state machines, he first explains the state pattern, how we can use it, what are the problems that this pattern solves, then what is a state machine, and only then after explaining everything about states in the state machine, he explains how we can use this technique in Unity. But honestly, the highlight of this book, at least to me, is not the implementation details of the game's feature and how you can use Unity to create this game. As I say, Unity is a tool I particularly dislike. The highlight of this book to myself is the post-production part, so part four, where Borja actually explains some processes related to how you can maintain the game after you finish developing it. This part alone, part four, is worth getting this book. From user testing to continuous integration, including optimization and profiling, and even automatic deployment, this is that extra mile that no other book or course talks about. You know, part of being a successful company, including a successful game studio, is taking care of your customers, the after sale process is ensuring that your customer is always getting more value from your 
product. And this is something that I've never seen around in other learning resources. I've never seen anyone talking about this process, but Borgia did. Well, to be very honest, this book was very humbling to me. It teached me that I have a, a lot to learn about teaching people because Borgia did an excellent job. As I say, this is a one-of-a-kind book. So from here, I understood that I was missing a lot of things in my teaching resources that I will for sure leverage from what I learned with Borgia Lobby. So even if you are a good engine developer, it's worth getting this book because there is a lot to take from it. Not only the technical aspect of how you can implement the features in Unity specifically, but everything about this book is very enriching. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. This is a series about reviewing learning resources. I hope you enjoy it. But I'm tapping out from here. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Keep developing and until the next one. See you there.